They say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But what about us non-books? We get judged daily by our looks, our shoe size, by the results of our mandatory drug tests. But that shouldn't matter. All that really matters is what you've got right up here. Hair. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, you know what I love about like musicians that have toured the world, Rob, you guys like are like always on time, right? <laughs> because it's like, you got to be on stage by 9.15 kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Curve yeah. at 11. So it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, Rob? I'm good. Nice to see you. You too, man. You too. Uh, you're in Brooklyn, right? I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How's New York going? Uh, pretty good. You know, all things considered, we're, uh, you know, adapting. Now that the weather's getting colder, it's a little harder to do all the things outside, but uh, we're making it work. We're Absolutely. resilient. Not very resilient. Yeah. The people that say New York is, that, that Corona was going to hit it. It's like, listen, just New York will always be back. But yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Rob. So let me introduce you to my audience really quickly. Um, you may not recognize his name, ladies and gentlemen, but you sure as heck will recognize some of his iconic live images that you've already made, man. So, like some of these images, just uh, iconic. That's the word. And um, some of the relationships you've built with some of the bands you work with, Rob, you're basically, you know, you're like another band member. You're like, reminds you of Anton Corvin with uh, U2 or, or stuff like that, man. It's really, really cool stuff. So welcome to the show, Rob. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and by the way, RobLoud.com uh, for prints and a whole bunch, like the greatest web store you will ever see. Just a <laughs> lot of good stuff in there, man. So absolutely. So Rob, yeah, let's, um, you know, thanks for your time. Let me get started uh, with this. The month of March was jarring for all of us, Rob, for everyone in the world. But I got to ask you about the month of March for you because you were packing your bags uh, just pretty much to go around the world three times this year with the killers. So I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, can you tell us about this month, the experience for you? Yeah. Um, well, I was on the road with a band called White Reaper, uh, a great band at a local. Great band. And they are not quite at the killers level. So, you know, we were doing shows like the last show I, I shot with them, we were doing a, a mostly a West coast tour and we were at, um, Oh, a famous LA spot that I cannot believe I'm forgetting the name of it, but that was the last, basically the last show that I, I was with them and their next show got canceled. So I was already sort of starting to see this wave, but I'm thinking yeah. killer's tour starts end of May. Yeah. Rehearsal start in April. Like this isn't going to go on for a month. Like, right. <laughs> so right. I wasn't that worried. And then I come home and yeah, like you said, I was, you know, starting to get into the, the mindset of going on basically an eight month world tour with the killers. And uh, I, you know, that's when panic started setting and like, this may not happen. Uh, yeah. You know, th as a photographer, I have this on my itinerary for months. So, you know, essentially sure. now I'm like, well, what am I going to do for work? And this is again, before everyone was like, what am I going to do about work? You know? Right. So luckily a lot of things have come back, but you know, live music, unfortunately is probably going to be the last thing. I can't really think of an industry that will come back after that. You know, sports could happen without fans. Yeah. Um, you know, restaurants are pivoting and, and, and opening up and, and uh, you know, getting creative with their outdoor space, but live music. Yeah. Like true live music as we know it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. And a couple of weeks ago, I was at a live uh, music industry conference online. And, uh, you know, they were talking that in Europe before the, the second wave that, that is happening now in, in Europe, they were doing some live shows already in, mm -hmm. in like the Netherlands and stuff with social distancing. And to everyone's surprise, AIG, Live Nation, they were not selling out. In fact, there were 40% were being sold only yeah, of the yeah. tickets. So so it's that psychological effect is affecting some people as well, Rob. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, I applaud the bands that are trying to be creative and doing the, the drive-in shows and things like that. And I think it's important for, you know, to bring a little money in, especially for crews or, or maybe the musicians that don't have a lot in the bank that they could just, you know, basically take a year or two off. 
Um, but at the end of the day, I think that novelty, much like the at home performances, it's just going to wear off, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's also hard to regulate those kinds of things, you know, you know, of course they do what they can at the door, but whether it's taking temperatures or trying to keep people, people socially distanced, but you know, once, you know, that song comes on or you got a couple of drinks in you, like a lot of those things go out the window and then that's <laughs> when people get in trouble. And then that's when society gets in trouble. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, Rob. Yeah. Absolutely. So listen, before before I, I want to ask you a little bit about your photojournalism work and your yeah. and your background, uh, I want to ask you about something that you posted recently on social media, and it's that um, the monetization uh, through Getty Images, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, because we, we hear a lot about like the Spotify for musicians monetization and and how poor it is sometimes for YouTube, but never for photographers. Yeah. That was really eye-opening. Do you mind sharing with us a little bit? No. So, you know, every month uh, I, I worked um, as a freelancer, um, but a, a pretty, it was basically the bulk of my work for five or eight, to eight years or so, uh, shooting assignments for Getty Images. And basically I would get a phone call saying, are you available to shoot this assignment? And if you are, and then um, it would be as a contributor or a stringer. So basically if you're a stringer, you're going to get paid a day rate. They kind of own the photos, that's it. But if you're a contributor, you get paid monthly royalties as these pictures sell. So okay. of the 25,000 images I have on Getty, I would say maybe half or a little more than half I get paid royalties on. And so you get this monthly statement and it shows you all the pricing. And right. every once in a while, you'll see something big, maybe someone got in trouble or someone got married or someone died. And you're like, why is all of a sudden this guy selling like crazy? But then you'll see the prices. And you know, this one I posted about uh, was sold for 15 cents and it was an international sale, which means I get 30% of that. Mm -hmm. U.S. sales, I would get 50%. So I essentially made five cents selling a photo. And you look, there's a few of them. I mean, and this is of Brandon Flowers of the Killers and Julian Casablanca of the Strokes. Like these are major bands and major um, artists. Yeah. So people are, are, are buying, you know, and it could be like a little tiny thumbnail on a, on a website, you know, but still five cents. Uh, it kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a, such a great photo too, but uh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, Rob. All right. Uh, I have to ask you these questions that you've answered a million times, but yeah. it, you know, we, we, we got to know um, what inspired you to get the camera, Rob, because you're, you're an artist, basically what you do is just beautiful. What was the inspiration? Was there a particular moment in your childhood with something that clicked? What, what was that moment? Um, I could, I can answer that in hindsight, I, I, I did like photography when I was younger. Um, and I, I did love the nostalgic element of being able to go back and, and look through an event. Um, I never really realized that until later when I kind of connected the dots, I took one photography class in college. Um, I had an office job and I just right, right out of college. And, and I just kind of thought, I, I don't know if this is for me. Uh, so photography was really more getting me out and, and to work for myself more than like a burning desire for photography that kind of came as I started doing it more and started getting better at it. So, uh, yeah. it was kind of a reverse engineer, uh, into the career. Hey, yeah, that's great. Well, it worked out for all of us yeah. for sure. Um, we, we talked about Anton Corbin earlier. He directed mm -hmm. films like the Ian Curtis biopic control. Uh, and I know that, you know, not only are you a photographer, but you've done a bunch of commercials for open table, uh, advertising campaigns, just beautiful things. And they have your look. It's it's fascinating. But I want to ask you about the documentary that you wrecked up uh, frequent, uh, recently that you filmed in a 77 Volkswagen. Yeah. So, well, that is actually currently on ice. Um, okay. We're not sure if, if that will ever uh, see the light of day. But basically, we were traveling. Um, and I was documenting this guy who is trying to become a, a, at the forefront of um, sort of a digital re revolution of instead of he, he creates apps and businesses and, and most apps want to keep you in the app for as long as possible. His goal was to get you out. So you use it to um, you know, help make plans or get out into the world. So we mm -hmm. were meeting with um, like think tanks and thought leaders and students, um, different tech companies, um, about just sort of like where social media is headed, how it's completely taken over our lives, how it's meant to, you know, enhance our lives, but it really makes a lot of people, you know, sad and depressed. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, right now we, 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 we completed the trip uh, and now uh, we see kind of where we take it. So uh, we've been wrapped with that for a couple of years now. 
So okay. that probably is, is a little bit outdated information, uh, but it may still see the light of day. It's very relevant. So, yeah, I think so. I think so. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, before we check out some of your photos, Rob, and I do want to get your, your thoughts on that. Um, I want to ask you a couple of things. Was there, you know, a photo ever in one of your shows with the killers or whoever that you had the perfect shot and you, and you messed it up for whatever <laughs> reason, like you knew that it was, it was going to be like the Glastonbury shot or so, and yeah, you yeah. knew it and you just knew it, but for like, you run out of battery or like yeah. what, or, or some, some roadie trip, yeah, tripped yeah, yeah. in. Yeah. Man, that's a, I've, I've never been asked that. Uh, and I, I, I'm sure the answer is yes. But the thing though, with touring, be, being a touring photographer and, and getting to see, you know, the show every night or, or you know, their version of the show, yeah. uh, you know, there's almost always another chance. So, you know, I, I don't think I ever really, like the Glastonbury photo you're referring to, um, like that was sort of a one, like a one-off moment. So if I would have blew that, that would have definitely stuck out. But normally I think from show to show, if I'm like, oh, I didn't get that tomorrow, you know, if they do that, I'll be ready for it. I'll be in a better position. That happens a lot where when, some, when the action happens and you're out of position, here's one actually. Uh, Liam Gallagher crashed the stage at Lollapalooza and I think it was in Brazil. He did it twice. But the first time he did it, it was a rare moment where I, I was at the front of house to where like the lighting and, and sound console is Yeah, shooting wide stuff. And all of a sudden I see Liam just stroll out onto the stage just to say hi to Brandon in the middle of the show. Uh, so I'm <laughs> right now running, cursing under my breath, running down the, the pathway. Yeah. I mean, that, that in, they have, in the middle, that, yeah. Yeah, that they have at the festivals, running and screaming and shooting, you know, while I'm running, like, you know, as if I'm, you know, like in war or something, like running with a <laughs> gun or something. And I'm, I'm sh like trying to get these photos on the fly and get close enough to get it, like, you know, so it, it makes kind of a, a nicer photo instead of like, it looked like I'm a million miles away or like just in the crowd. But so that's one photo that, yes, I wish I got a better moment. But he did it again at another festival and that I was on uh -huh. the stage for. So that happened five feet in front of me so oh, so it happened gonna, again okay yes but that certainly wasn't planned it certainly wasn't planned so that's amazing Rob. yeah that's great all right do you mind if i share my screen and we take a no, look at some of your it. photos yeah thanks man thank you thank you let's see let's see if this thing works you see you should yep. take my screen yeah, cool cool it. thanks rob thanks for indulging us with this man oh yeah sure all right. So, uh, of course, I'm a Miami boy, so I got to start with this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I got to start with your portraits yeah. are, are on your website and they're amazing. You're, Thank you, you. You're, yeah, you, you just captured the essence of the person. I've met D Wade a couple of times, but you mm -hmm. just, just tell us about this. Like, you just got him. So, um, this is when I was with Getty Images. And whenever I was mostly photographing like celebrity based things, uh, events or red carpets sometimes there would be like private parties or weird uh, branded activations this was for um goldfish like the crackers like the cheesy mm -hmm. cracker gold <laughs> oh really and, yeah and so uh you know i don't in my head i'm like i, I have an opportunity to, to to shoot with Dwayne wade an enormous basketball star uh so i had him we had some i had him um throwing up some goldfish and catching him in his mouth Mm. Uh, which were kind of cool and of course the brand love but like for me I wanted something more for myself so I just set him up against this white wall um, and then lit him to make it look a little bit more like maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one portrait as opposed to you know 20 like an advertising campaign yeah yeah so um, yeah so he was super cool uh, and he, he was surprisingly good at well not I guess not that surprisingly but good at the, the catching of the goldfish in his mouth I remember being <laughs> very impressed. He just, he didn't miss So, But I guess that kind of <laughs> is similar to what he does or did for a living. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, I, I, I love it. Okay. Let's do one more portrait. Okay. Also great. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, this was for um, Tag Heuer, the watch company. And they were mm. doing um, a series. They were pairing up um, two different kinds of people uh, for an ad campaign. And so this was, um, it was Neil Patrick Harris and then a female uh, race car driver. I'm forgetting her name, not Danica Patrick, another, another female driver. But anyway, um, yeah, so had, had a couple hour, 
a couple hours with him. Um, cool guy. Very cool. Actually, yeah, very cool, very funny, uh, very dry. Uh, kind of exactly what you would expect or what you would hope to expect from him. It's so funny. Um, and like just a pro. I mean, he's been doing this for so long. So like, you know, actors just take direction so well. So uh, yeah. I remember this being a very easy and enjoyable shoot. That's crazy. You know, I, I remember I remember I um I had a friend whose uncle was the bartender at Studio 54 in, oh, in, yeah. the, in the 70s. And he told me the same thing about Jack Nicholson, oh, yeah. that the guy is exactly like that in real life. Yeah. It's almost like they're just putting a, a camera on him. You know? yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I've definitely met some people that aren't what you think. Yeah. But, you know, they could be having a bad day or something. Like, you know, you never know. You know, you don't want to never know. just judge them on like maybe meeting them for like 10 minutes. Right. Of course. Of course. Uh, I love this one. You have such a great tennis collection, but I just have to pick one. This is Legends, man. It's, yeah. I mean, the youngest guy to ever win uh, a major with Michael Chang, uh, three time Grand Slam Jim Curry on the left, Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. I mean, yeah, these are some of the biggest tennis players ever. So Jim Curry on the left, uh, he loves music. And this was sort of his, um, his kind of thing. Uh, he was doing this tour with with um, retired tennis players, and there was a certain mm. you had to have won either a Grand Slam or there was certain there was a criteria to be able to play, and and it was all very high end. Like John McEnroe was also part of it a lot, right? Uh, and so Jim loves music. Jim has a lot of music prints in his um, apartment and office, and so he, I started shooting this tour, this tennis tour, like music, and started shooting a lot of black and white, and doing a lot of stuff in the locker room, and shooting them more like a band um, as opposed to tennis players. And uh, Jim, who was essentially, uh, uh, Jim Currier, who was essentially signing my checks, really liked it. Um, and I thought it was just a, a, a cool approach uh, to capture, you know, athletes who are generally, especially in tennis and individual sport are generally, uh, you know, isolated and on their own, not acting yeah. and speaking so much to each other. So, or at least in a way right. where like you can document it. So. Uh, yeah, we, I did a lot of this kind of work, uh, you know, toured with them kind of on and off for seven or eight years. Super cool. Um, I, yeah. I miss that, Rob. I miss when tennis was like the bomb and everyone yeah. watched tennis. You remember yeah. those days? That was the yeah. best. I know. I don't know what happened. Yeah, we, we, we've seen, you know, in the last 25 years, uh, some unbelievable talent. Yeah, I think I'm You know what it is? It's they're not American. Can you imagine if like Jokovic was American? That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, and, you know, and and <laughs> a, a lot of it is because there's so many sp different sports here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, kids play, you know, baseball and basketball and soccer and football, and you know, by the time you get to like tennis, yeah, it's like you know, because because they don't also now at this point they don't have a lot of people to look up to, you know, because they didn't yeah they don't have like the Sampras and the Agassi and that's true. The McEnroe, so. They don't have like that American player, you know. So yeah, that that hero, absolutely. All right, let's do a couple more. One, let's do music now. Um, sure. Okay, let's do a couple with the killers. This one's fantastic. <laughs> I think I actually think it may be your best. So I don't. It's like so underrated. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, okay, little. I'll give you a little secret. This is with an iPhone. Oh um, my god, that's great. I have another uh version of this that I like better that was with a film camera. Uh but we just liked this this whole evening we just kind of <laughs> was was fun and funny and so I think we wanted to just get like post something and so the iPhone uh the iPhone's the photo that got got put out there. But I just, I love this too because the guy in the middle who's so distracting but also like it kind of also makes the, the picture funny because he probably has it's no just, idea who he's looking at right what's happening um there's just a group of where was this oh this is in um i think valencia spain oh yeah that guy knows no idea yeah 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 um <laughs> and so we were yeah we were probably doing like a festival uh and you know we just a little little you know team outing to the to the fair ah oh, that's amazing yeah. What a great photo. The colors. Yeah. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. All right. One more, Robin. Let's yeah. it's unsurprising, but we got to talk yeah. about it. We got to talk. Yeah. When you, when you took this photo, Rob, like what was going through your head? Uh, don't mess it up. Ugh. Don't mess it up and don't overexpose because if you've ever taken a photo 
if you ever try to edit a photo on your iPhone, say, you can usually, you can save a dark photo a lot easier than a photo that's too bright. Um, mm, and true. so this is a moment where the pink confetti goes off, uh, lights kick on, you kind of can't prepare for it. Um, you know, no, you know, cause I'm, I'm shooting with manual settings. So I, I kind of know about where I want things to be. And luckily, um, I didn't screw it up. Uh, we had talked about this moment, Brandon and I, Really? Who, you see, who you see here we had talked about this moment beforehand because he wasn't he hadn't been wearing the cowboy hat mm. this was just a, a special a specific moment during the song the man that he was going to put this hat on uh so we talked about doing a few different things in this moment but we realized that it was just a lot of moving parts and a lot of things can maybe go wrong and it's already such a big moment so we didn't really need much uh and so he just turned his head knowing that i was going to be behind him and i was on the stage, you know, I'm on the stage a lot. I'm shooting from the stage a lot, but usually I'm, I'm hidden or maybe I pop up from behind the drum and then I go back yeah. down. This was, I mean, if you see the, the, the concert film on BBC, I mean, you see me standing yeah. right behind him. I mean, I'm, I'm awfully close. So um, I just took 10 or 15 photos of this moment as the confetti's going off. And uh, when we were going through the pictures backstage <laughs> after. He just knew. Yeah, he was like there. There was like two or three variations where the confetti is at various heights. Like one is all pink, which yeah. looks cool, but you kind of lose the perspective of like what's happening. Yeah. So we decided that uh, that this one uh, was going to be the one, and so uh, yeah, this seems to be, be be a favorite. Amazing, but yeah, Rob. No, you you are barely like you're really good stealth in the stage. I think the last time I saw you was at the Fort Lauderdale the Riptide Music Festival. Yeah. Last yeah. probably around this time last year actually. Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was November. Oh, November. wow. 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 Um that was a good show by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very good show. Really good energy and uh you you took some good shots that trip, that Florida trip. But anyway, yeah. Rob, you said it all. You're a busy guy. <laughs> Listen, we're so stoked that we got to have you and meet you man and just yeah. express your admiration because um very important what you do, man. Very important to stuff. Just That's very kind. Yeah, moment. and 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 you had mentioned Anton's name, and <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, I mean he he is uh, definitely a favorite of, of the killers, and 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 definitely a favorite of mine. And so you know, uh, I appreciate you even considering or, or mentioning his name uh, in the same breath. So. Oh, Rob, listen, you're really leaving nice. a legacy. You've been working hard, so you you, you, you don't know the legacy you're leaving because you're so busy doing it. But I'm telling you, <laughs> as an outsider... I'll take your word for it. Absolutely, brother. So uh, just a reminder to everybody, robloud.com. If you want to buy one of these beautiful prints and some other stuff, find more about Rob. And next time you see the killers, keep an eye out for his stealth moves and amazing photos. Thank you. Awesome. All right, man. All right, have a good one. Be safe. Take care. Okay, take care.